What's up everybody, welcome back to Gear 101. In today's episode, we have my top five worst bows for 2020. Now I know that typically, whenever you're watching a video like this, you've already made your purchase or already made your decision and you're basically looking uh, for someone just to confirm what you was already thinking or confirm what you found. That may not be the case. That's probably not gonna be the case. Probably gonna make some people upset or angry. Just know that this is my opinion. Uh, it's what I like and what I like may not be what you like. So keep that in mind. But basically I went to ATA. I shot every bow that I possibly could. And I found that some bows, you know, they, the social media influencers and stuff, they hype up this part of that part of it. And a lot of times it's obvious that they're just completely lying because they're getting free bows or getting money. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's subjective and it might just be personal preference. And then other times it's, you know, it's clear that they just said it because they had to. Before we get started, I do want to say that one bow I did not find at ATA. I'm not sure if I just passed up the booth or for whatever reason. APA bows, sorry, I didn't see you. So you didn't make it in my top five worst bows, but you also didn't make it in my top five best bows. I don't know, sorry APA, couldn't find you. Next, I do wanna say that I did not shoot Martin bows this year. And that was for the simple fact that it was the ugliest, most um, thrown together looking mess that I've ever seen. It looked like somebody just took a butter knife and just uh, chiseled away at a piece of aluminum to make the riser. Everything was blocky, the finish wasn't good. I was not impressed at all. Uh, it just felt super cheap and quickly thrown together. I didn't like it so much so that I didn't want to shoot it. And that's saying a lot because I tested a whole lot of bows and a lot of bows that I just, I didn't think that I would like, but I still wanted to give them a chance. Still didn't even want to shoot that Martin because it was just awful and cheap looking. So let's get into the top five worst bows of 2020. Number five is the PSE Carbon Air Stealth Mach 1. Right out of the gate, as soon as I've seen this bow in person, I'm like, this thing is probably the ugliest bow that I've ever seen uh, as far as just your standard carbon bow. It's pretty darn ugly. I will say the draw cycle is decent. It's not the worst draw cycle by any means, but there's a lot of hand shock and it was pretty loud. Um, again, it's hard to tell exactly how loud when you're in a building like that but you do have the other bows to compare it to. So I don't know how loud it was, but compared to other bows, it was one of the louder bows. And the fact that this bow is like a $1,600 bow is just unacceptable to me. I think that if you're gonna give that kind of money, you should have basically a perfect bow, and this bow is far from perfect. Number four is gonna be the Hoyt Carbon RX4 Alpha. Um, I will say right up front, this bow is balanced really well. The finish is awesome. It looks really good, and it feels really good in the hand, but Every Hoyt that I've ever shot, including this one, has the worst back wall that I've ever felt. I mean, for a bow that costs this much money, it is just so spongy. And again, some people like that. I don't. I like a more solid back wall. But the Hoyt bows for the last few years have been, in my opinion, super spongy back walled. Um, the draw cycle is okay, but honestly, it's just it, what it comes down to is that spongy back wall and the fact that it's not just perfect in every way because it's what, $1,600, $1,700. I'm not giving that for a bow unless it's perfect. The number three bow, and this one's gonna make a lot of people mad because old John Dudley hyped it up quite a bit, but it's gonna be the PSE Evo NXT. So I showed up to ATA the day after the big announcement that Dudley was moving from Hoyt to PSE. I was like, man, there must be a reason. These PSE bows must shoot really, really good this year. This is not the case. I mean, it draw cycle again was okay the back wall was meh whatever a lot of noise on the shot and quite a bit of vibration um the reason that this bow gets the number three spot is just because the amount of hype that went into this bow and all the people talking about it and how dudley is saying that it's just this much better and it's just the best thing and i literally shot a whole lot of bows it was way better than any pse that i touched um, honestly, it just makes me mad and he's got such a large following. So there's all of these people, these young kids and stuff that's going to go buy a PSE bow now because John Dudley shoots it and they may be getting a bow that's not really for them. Um, it could cause them to lose interest in a month or two. It could cause them, you know, bad habits. You never know what's going to happen. I think that Dudley being in the position that he's in, he needs to be saying, hey, go shoot every bow. You know, you might not like PSE, go try Matthews, go try Bowtech, try these other companies, try a smaller brand because every person likes something different. Uh, but just the amount of hype that went into the PSE bows and then just the amount of letdown that I was at how not great it was, 
just made me mad and for that reason you get the number three spot so if i'm being honest all of the bows that i've talked about so far aren't terrible i mean they're pretty darn good bows as they should be for you know thousand to seventeen hundred dollar bows they should be pretty nice bows uh the next two bows though honestly were just completely disappointing number two bow is going to be any of the gearhead archery bows those things felt like a bomb going off in your hand um it couldn't have been that they were out of tune or wrong arrows i mean it was just every single bow that i shot from them had so much vibration and the string angle is super sharp everything about it just feels unnatural you do get bonus points for thinking outside the box and having such a cool little short axle to axle bow but that's like it because the bow still weighs a ton there's so much metal in it that it's just a heavy bow so the short axle to axle that's cool you can put it on a backpack but you're not saving any weight you got a super sharp string angle and it's just no fun at all to shoot the draw cycle is not great and there's so much vibration it sounds terrible it sounds like a bomb going off too um, not happy at all with that gearhead but you do get bonus points because you at least look different now the bow that gets the number one worst bow for 2020 without a doubt is the bear status echo i don't know what's going on at bear i don't know who's behind all the engineering and stuff don't know who's running social media but they're all just liars because they're saying that this is just the smoothest bow ever this is the smoothest bow that bears ever um, made the most vibration free i've shot bear bows plenty in the past this is one of the worst ones um <laughs> there's so much vibration the draw cycle is stiff and but like the vibration is just horrendous i can't explain it for a bow that's that long and heavy and should be a pretty nice bow it feels so bad um, the gearhead bow has more vibration and is louder but it looks like it should be louder and should have more stuff going on negatively because of how it looks the bear bow should not be that awful but it is it's there's so much vibration that it's just no fun to shoot i shot it i think maybe three times and i just never even looked at the bear archery booth again because that thing was terrible hey so i'm sure i made some people mad because anytime you talk about um, bows it's like talking about someone's dog people's gonna get upset and 90% of the time you've already bought a bow or made a decision on a bow and more than likely you know some of you may have bought a Hoyt or a PSE and if you did and you love it that's fine don't get mad at me I'm just giving you my opinion um, but if you are on the fence about a bow I would definitely you know listen to what I'm saying because some things there's no denying vibration in a bow versus another bow if it's got more it's got more um, might not be a deal breaker for you but most of the time it is for me uh, but definitely go and shoot everything and find out for yourself if you like this video hit like subscribe to the channel because next time we've got the top five bows period for 2020 so you're going to get to hear what i like the best at ata uh, again i shot pretty much everything and there's some bows that really stood out for 2020 as just awesome bows and a lot of them you know you don't have to spend 16 1700 dollars to get an amazing bow definitely let me know in the comment section what bow that you're going to shoot for this year if you've decided if you haven't decided what are you leaning towards what have you heard have you shot any yourself because that's important go shoot some let me know till next time y'all be safe